Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me uh, today. And we're going to launch out this week into a new series, a new theme, uh, which is entitled The Gift of a Problem. Now, that seems uh, contradictory, counterintuitive to think that you can associate a problem with the gift. But as we shall see, God's blessings often come wrapped up in strange packages or strange wrappings. We look at the gift and it's wrapped up in a problem, but when we take out the package and unpack it, we see that what we thought was a problem was really a gift that helped us, that advanced us, that developed us. And we're going to look at um, some passages in the book of Acts with the focus on uh, this person who was an exceptional Christian layman. He was not a part of the clergy, but he was a layman. But um, he got something started, and it got started because he was the victim of a lynching. Yeah, lynchings are in the Bible. In fact, guess what? The Bible teaches that Jesus was lynched. And that is why Black Americans historically have been able to identify with Jesus because Emmett Till was lynched. Mary Turner was lynched in Valdosta, Georgia. Um, so many of our people have been lynched through the years, and so was Christ, and so was this man named Stephen. But our focus this entire week is the gift of a problem. Do you have a problem that you're dealing with? You may discover that with the passing of time and you look back over the problem, in retrospect, you may discover that it was really a gift, a gift. So let's look at two passages of scriptures, and I want you to pay close attention to what Christ told the church to do. Christ mandated the church to do and what the church actually did. And the focus should be on cities that we're going to read about in two verses. Okay. The first is Acts chapter one, verse eight. And the second verse we're going to look at uh, in a moment is Acts chapter eight, verse one. And it's easy to remember because one and eight, one and eight, then when you flip it, eight and one. So don't forget that. Acts one, eight, flip it. Eight, one. So this is what Jesus told the church to be about. This is part of what we might call the great commission, but it became the great omission. It says, but ye shall receive power. That's a good, the word power is the Greek word dunamis, from which we get our English word dynamite. And what does dynamite do? When you use dynamite, dynamite rearranges things. And Christ says, you're going to receive power to rearrange things, rearrange injustice and, and systemic and moral evil. You shall receive dynamite after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And watch this. You shall be my, be both be witnesses unto me, witness about me, uh, both in Jerusalem, in Ju all Judea, Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. What I want you to see in verse chapter one, verse eight, is Jesus is, is telling his disciples that he wants the Christian message to expand, uh, to spread. Now they are in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the center of the Jewish world. It's the capital of the Jewish world. Just like Mecca is the capital of the world for Muslims, Jerusalem is the capital of the Jewish world. And this is where the church started. And it says, but Jesus says, you may start in Jerusalem, but I don't want you to stop in Jerusalem. And anytime the Christian, Christianity should start with you, but it should never stop with you. You should be a contagious Christian. Other people should want to know Christ because they see Christ in you. We're called to be walking advertisements for Jesus Christ. And he says, look, I want you to start in Jerusalem, which is your home, get your home base right. Then expand to Judea and then to Samaria. Samaria uh, and Jews did not get along because Samaritans were considered 
half-breed Jews, and there was great tension and enmity historically between Jerusalem Jews and Samaritans. But Jesus says, like, I want the gospel to expand to Samaria. Don't forget Samaria and to the other most parts of the world, earth. So the goal is, may the gospel expand. May you become witnesses throughout the entire world. Watch this. That's what Christ's goal was. But notice what happened. Look at Acts chapter 6, verse 7. Acts chapter 6, verse 7. So many years has passed, and this is what we read. So the word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now, what do you notice uh, that is missing in verse 7? Well, it says the word of God spread. Now, that's what Christ wanted to, wanted to happen. He wanted the word of God to spread. But notice what it says. The number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased. What's missing? The number of disciples, new Christians are being made in Jerusalem, but it was never Christ's objective that it would be concretized and centered exclusively in Jerusalem. Christ said, I want you, you shall receive power, dynamite to rearrange things, not just in Jerusalem, but in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And their end had become Jerusalem. They had not built bridges to other communities, other locales. They were only in Jerusalem. And guess what? They would have stayed in Jerusalem. They would have stayed among themselves. It was an all Jewish church. Christ wanted the church to be multi-ethnic, multilingual, and it's an all Jewish Jerusalem church. But uh, something happened to force the church to move from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And what was it that happened? Remember I said Acts 1.8? But flip it, you got Acts 8.1. So look at Acts 8.1, and we will see what happens. It says, and Saul, who will later become Paul, we know who he is, approved of, of their killing him. And the person they're talking about is Stephen. Stephen was the first martyr uh, in the New Testament. Uh, he was the first person to be killed for his faith. It says, and Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. So in Acts 1-8, remember Christ wanted the church to go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. They parked in Jerusalem and grew in Jerusalem but they were not expanding beyond their little sacred circle, beyond their little holy huddle. But something happened that forced them to do what Christ told them to do in Acts 1.8. And Acts 8.1 tells us what it was that did it. It says, on that day, a great persecution, a great persecution. In other words, it was the result of persecution that was against the church to escape the persecution. They had to leave Jerusalem and move to Judea and Samaria. And guess what? Not only are they gonna to go to Judea and Samaria, and in fact, notice who goes to, uh, in fact, verse four says this, chapter eight, verse four says, those who were scattered preached the word wherever they went to the ends of the earth, which was what Jesus' initial uh, uh, commission to them was preaching Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. In fact, do they get to Samaria? Look at Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Philip went down to the city. He was one of the original deacons. Went down to the city in Samaria. What, what is this teaching us? It's teaching us this. Go back to Acts chapter 8, verse 1. We see the church finally got out of Jerusalem. And once they got out of Jerusalem, chapter 8, verse 1, not 1, 8, but chapter 8, verse 1, once they got to Jerusalem, left Jerusalem, they ended up going to Judea, Samaria. Philip went to Samaria. They went everywhere preaching the gospel. They went to the ends of the earth like Christ commissioned them to do. It, to do. What 
forced them to do it, a great persecution. In other words, a problem is what caused them to fulfill God's purpose in their life. And sometimes, listen to me, it is a problem that God uses to get us to expand, to move our lives in new directions. Sometimes it is rejection that moves us in a new direction. And they experienced the height of rejection in Jerusalem, persecution. They had just killed Stephen. They were arresting Christians and putting them in jail. And they said, look, we got to get out of town. Things are hot. And because things were hot, they moved to Samaria, uh, Judea, Samaria, and to the other, to the ends of the earth. Now, let's take it from back then and bring it up to right now in your life. Is it possible that God has a plan and a purpose for your life and you're supposed to be about doing something, but you've been procrastinating in Jerusalem when Christ wants you to be someplace else? You're supposed to maybe be someplace else vocationally. You're supposed to be some way place else uh, relationally. You're supposed to be someplace else when it comes to your uh, academics and, and, and uh, the, the, the graduation from college. And you know you're supposed to be someplace else, but you've gotten stuck in Jerusalem. It's easy to get stuck in a place where God doesn't want you to be. So guess what God has to do? He has to send us the gift of a problem, persecution, some trouble. Somebody doesn't like us. Somebody mistreats us. Somebody rejects us. For the not to hurt us, but to get us to where God wants us to be. You know, it's amazing sometimes when we look over our lives and say, you know what, what the devil meant for evil, God used for good. How many times it took a problem to be the gift to get us unstuck out of Jerusalem and to move us and our lives in a new direction. This is what we're going to talk about this week, the gift of a problem. So, you may say when a problem comes into your life, God, why, 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 why? You'll cry for six months. God, why did this happen? Why did this happen? You'll cry for a year. Why did this happen? And then when that problem moves you to a new direction, you'll say, God, you were in this all along. Thank you for the problem that proved to be a gift because if I didn't have that problem, I never would have moved to the places where you wanted me. To be. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and for this truth. Acts 1 8, move beyond Jerusalem. Acts 8 1, persecution made it happen. Many of us know what you want us to do, but we're not doing it. So, whatever you have to use to get us there, use the tool, even sometimes if it's a problem, and help us to be patient and trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to thank you for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. Uh, look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a digital disciple here at St. Stephen Church. Email us at newstart at sscLive.org. newstart at sscLive.org. I also like to uh, tell you that I've written a book uh, during COVID-19 last year, I wrote a book and it's entitled Getting to the Promised Land, uh, Black America and the Unfinished Work of the Civil Rights Movement. And uh, it's a book ab about what we must do as black Americans in a world where there's tremendous white backlash and resistance against what uniquely black people should be receiving in this country because of injustice. The book was forwarded by uh, the brilliant Dr. Cornell West, and I think it's going to be a tremendous blessing for you. So go to my website, Dr. www.drkevinwcosby.com. I have about four, well, I've written about six books, and I think all of them are on the website. So if you'd like to purchase the book, uh, please feel free to do so. I think it will be a tremendous blessing to you. Well, thank you so much for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. And uh, we'll pick up on this again tomorrow. But until then, during COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget 
that God is in control. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.